All right, on today's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our artificial intelligence course and we're still doing our learning module. Let's have a look at what we went over today. Now, I did start a new learning module because our old module got up to about 609 lines of code. So we started a new one this morning and we're going to pick up what we left off from yesterday. So we can begin a test now by putting together these machine learning models using Scikit-Learn to be able to train some training set and then test on some testing set as well. And this splitting up into training groups and testing groups and testing happens so often that Scikit-Learn has functions built in for trying to do it. Now this is our original algorithm here as you can see. This is the one from yesterday. I'm just going to show you this one really quickly because I want to give you a comparison as the one we did today. All right. So we did it all by hand just now, talking about the previous one. But if we take a look at our next algorithm, we will see that we can take advantage of some other features that exist in Scikit Learn. We can really simplify a lot. We can really simplify a lot of our logic. And this is the new model here, or the new algorithm here. Well, first, let me go ahead and show you. So we're going to cut off everything. I'm not going to cut everything off, but we're going to exclude this piece right here for the top and the bottom. Let me go back and show you this. So yeah, we're going to start from the holdout. So we're going to exclude everything on the top just for comparisons. We're not going to talk about the width open and all that stuff for row and reader. We're just going to compare from here on. All right. So remember, this is the old algorithm here. All of this. And now we're going to go into the new algorithm. So there's a function built into scikit-learn called train test split, which we automatically which will automatically split data into a training group and testing group. Now, of course, the instructor didn't give me the uh, input because it was a different input to obtain this train test split. So I had to find it on my own. I'm not going to post what it is because if I had to do my own research, so do you. But yeah. So this help us. Uh, this helps us separate data into training and testing groups. So you can see here we have an evidence equals row evidence for row and data. Then we have labels equals row label for row and data. Then we just have to specify what proportions should go to the testing group. Something like 0.5 for half the data. So we have X training, X testing, Y training, Y testing equals train test split function. Then we have our evidence, our labels, and our test size equals the 0.5 that we talked about. Then we can fit the model on the training data, model.fit, X training, Y training. Next, we can make the predictions on that testing data. You can see predictions equals model.predict X testing. And then we just count how many times our testing data matched the predictions and how many times it didn't. So you see we have correct equals Y testing equaling predictions dot sum. Incorrect equals Y testing doesn't equal predictions dot sum. Total equals list of predictions. And then we print out. So let me get and count all of these lines here in our new algorithm. We have one, two, three, four, five. I think it's more than that. Hold on. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine lines of code in our new algorithm compared to. Yeah, I'm not going to count, but you can see that's way more than nine. It's a lot more robust. So, yeah, using the built in functions inside of Scikit-Learn cut back dramatically on how much code we have to actually write by hand because Scikit already has functions that can do whatever we wanted to do well for that particular function without having to type everything out so yeah it is a big time saver and it is a big space saver so yeah and as you can see all we have to do now is just print out the results and i'm going to do it right now just to show you that it is working and i didn't put another csv over it's the same one but i just relabeled it banknotes one csv so they can run two different csvs so they're not both trying to compete for the same csv and uh, you know run into complications. and as you can see both algorithms are working the first one and i'm still using the k neighbors classifier because that was the best model for our program and it did come back so the first one is still doing 685 correct zero incorrect 100 percent accuracy and the new model is doing 685 one incorrect 99.85% accuracy. Let's run it again and see if it stays consistent. Okay, so again, it came back for no incorrect for the first model and one incorrect for the second model. Let's do it one more time just to see. Because as you know, the data is shuffled. So we are, we are processing the same data, but we're shuffling it the order that it's in. So we're not exactly seeing the same type of data in the same type of uh, 
what do you call it, like the same type of uh, format each time. Every time it's coming in a different format because it's getting shuffled. So yeah, let's do it one more time and see if it stays the same. All right, stay the same again. Okay. All right, so it looks like the first one is still doing 685 correct and zero incorrect, 100% accuracy. And the second one is still doing 685 correct and one incorrect for 99.85% accuracy. And again, the difference between the uh, algorithms is just that the, the amount of uh, line of code we don't have to write. So like I said, we only did nine lines of code for this one here, just nine lines. And for this one, it was a lot more. And this one here, we used the, uh, what was it, the train test split function. And it, and it cut back a lot, so we didn't have to do that much typing. Yeah, that's basically what we did for this morning. We will pick it up tonight with TensorFlow for our nightly Python Poppy episode. But yeah, of course, I will keep you guys posted every step of the way. I want to do this one more time just to make sure. I want to, I don't know, I'm just a perfectionist like that. I want them both to be 100% accurate. I want to see if I can get that. Uh, now the first one is coming back one incorrect, and the second one is coming back zero incorrect for 100% accuracy. I'll do it one more time just to try, and then I'm going to let you guys go. All right, all right, yeah, whatever. So, yep, so that's what it is. Of course, I'm going to keep you guys posted every step of the way, but for now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.